So, a good day to everyone. Uh, for this video lecture, I'm going to talk about the care of litter and the sow after farrowing. So, last video lecture, I talked about the uh, herd management or management practices that you need to employ on the um, gestating sow, on the farrowing sow. So, uh, for this, I'm going to talk about the management practices that you need to employ for um, piglets. So, for the first few minutes, so as soon as the piglet is expelled, uh, you need to remove the transparent fetal membrane covering the body with clean dry clothes. So, uh, as you can see on the picture, you have this transparent fetal membrane na tinatawag or itong parang mucus stuff. So, you need to clean this with uh, clean dry clothes. So, also, you need to remove also the mucus that clogs the snout to let the piglet uh, breathe freely. So, uh, usually, uh, parang kinocover kasi nitong mucus na to yung um, opening, yung nostril ng uh, piglet. So, one thing that you need to look after is dapat ma-remove yun in order for the pig to breathe freely kasi pag clean or Dina black nitong mucus yung nostril hindi uh, maayos yung airflow so baka ikamatay pa ng pig so da yun yung una yung gagawin yun yung una yung uh, titignan if uh, pag nanganak na yung baboy dapat uh, free from uh, mucus yung uh, piglet then after that you need to rub the sides of the newly born piglet in order to stimulate the vital organs in order for the piglets to activate breathing and blood circulation. So, yun. Especially if the piglet is not um, is not responsive. So, hindi siya responsive sa pag hinahawakan mo. So, you need to rub the sides of the newly born piglets para may stimulate yung heart and lungs niya para mag and mag-circulate yung blood niya. Then, in an apparently lifeless uh, piglet, examine the base of the umbilical cord dito sa part na to. So, pag hindi gumagalaw, pag nirab mo na yung side, pero hindi pa rin uh, gumagalaw, hindi pa rin nagre-react, uh, you could check itong base ng umbilical cord. So, dito sa part na to, if it is pulsating movement, so parang pag yung nagpo-pulse yung mga uh, ugat ninyo. So, gano'n rin. Tignan, uh, i-feel nyo if may pulsating movement dito sa base ng umbilical cord. And, if meron, you could ar uh, apply artificial respiration dito sa mouth niya to revive the piglet. So, yun yung gagawin. If eh, hindi na gumagalaw, hindi, wala nang unresponsive na yung piglet, pero may pulsating movement. So, you could apply artificial respiration. Then, uh, after farrowing kasi, after nanganak yung baboy, yung parang indication na tapos na yung farrowing is the expulsion of the placenta, which indicates that the farrowing is finished. So, uh, remove the placenta indicates that, uh, yun nga, farrowing is finished and then, um, with that, wala nang lalabas. So, make sure na uh, yung placenta is uh, lumabas na. So, make sure of it na um, nakita nyo or meron nang lumabas na placenta. So, yung gagawin, pwede nyo, pwede nyo nang itapon yung uh, placenta. Uh, so, if wala pang lumabas na placenta, which I've experienced yung nag-OJT ako, uh, walang, merong lumabas na placenta pero maliit lang. Maliit na amount lang. So, Yung na-observe namin, his hindi bumabangon, hindi tumatayo yung saw. So, yun pala, after 1 to 2 days, uh, tinurokan namin ng mga vitamins, anti antibodies, uh, antibiotic. Uh, pero wala pa rin parang improvement. Yun pala, merong naiwan na dead pig or na dead piglet, mummified piglet dun sa uh, chan ng saw. So, Yung ginawa ng technician, hinugot niya yung 
sa vulva, ipinasok niya yung kamay niya and then uh, kinuha yung um, patay na, uh, na piglet. So, yun. Uh, after some hours, nakatayo rin yung saw. So, yun. Yun yung cause bakit hindi nakatayo yung saw. So, always make sure na um, okay na or always make sure na talagang finish na yung farrowing. So, try to check if um, baka may naiwan pang piglet na patay dun sa um, uh, chan na saw. Then, you need to observe any hardening uh, moderately hot and reddened others as this indicates a developing case of mastitis. So, um, kailangan mong ma-observe yung other ng saw rin if it is hardened, medyo mainit, and then uh, nagre-red. So, this indicates yung uh, parang mastitis na disease. So, uh, pag hindi mo, pag wala kang ginawa dito, it may lead to yung MMA na tinatawag or yung mastitis, metritis, agalaxia. So, uh, which can, itong MMA syndrome, it, it can affect yung survival ng piglet. So, kailangan talaga na after observing na merong ganito yung other ng saw, uh, you apply yung appropriate treatments. Kasi pag hinayaan mo to magiging MMA syndrome, um, hindi na makakapag-suck uh, yung mga uh, piglets. Hindi na sila makakakuha ng milk since uh, ito kasing MMA syndrome, um, masakit for the sow. So, ang tendency niya, hindi na niya, uh, ayaw na niyang magpa-suck, ayaw na niyang magbigay ng um, milk. So, yun. And then, mahihirapan rin siya sa milk secretion. So, it will talaga affect yung survival ng piglets. It will affect yung uh, health and nutrition ng piglet. So, after that, uh, right after birth, so, you take care of the mucus. Um, nakita mo nang responsive yung piglet. Uh, you cut yung navel cord or your or the umbilical cord uh, 5 to 6 cm from the body. So, 5 to 6 cm from the body, ikakat mo yung uh, umbilical cord or na, yung navel cord na tinatawag. So, uh, you need to do this uh, kasi yung navel cord or the umbilical cord, um, it is a good opening for bacterial entry. So, pwedeng pumasok doon yung mga bacteria at, and it can cause infection, bacterial infection to the piglet which can affect the health of the piglet. So, kailangan ikat and then other farms, other, uh, yes, other farms, uh, dinidip nila or uh, nilalagyan nila ng solution yung uh, navel cord or the umbilical cord with uh, antiseptic in order to fully prevent yung entry of bacteria. Then, if there is an excessive bleeding that occurs from the navel, uh, you can tie the navel cord with a suture thread or knitting thread. So, parang ganito. You can tie it, but make sure that you cut the navel cord below the uh, suture thread or the knitting thread. So, dapat below the uh, yung sa thread, hindi sa above the thread. Kasi pag above, wala rin silbi. Uh, so, kailangan um, below the suture thread or knitting thread. Then, another one that they do is that they wait around 10 minutes, uh, 5 to 10 minutes in order for the blood to be absorbed by the piglet. So, eh, Yung ginagawa ng ibang farm, uh, inum, uh, hinayaan muna nila na mag-dry up itong navel or umbilical cord. So, ginagawa nila, hinayaan nila para ma-absorb ng piglet yung mga blood. So, yung blood kasi, it is a good source of yung iron na desperately need ng mga piglet. So, yun, hinayaan nilang mag-dry up and then doon lang nila ikakat. And then, after you cut the navel cord, you clip the piglet's eight sharp teeth to prevent injuries to the sow's other and lacerations to the piglets when they fight for a teeth. So, yun yung isang kailangan rin na gawin. So, um, it is important talaga to clip yung mga sharp teeth nila. So, first reason is that in order to prevent sow injury, kasi nga, if it is sharp, 
ma-injure yung other or your or yung teeth ng saw. So, yung tendency pag na-injure yung teeth or, or other ng saw, hindi na niya gusto or hindi, hindi na niya gusto yung uh, mag, magpasuso. So, pag ganun, uh, this will affect yung nutrition ng animal. Wala silang makukuhang uh, milk. So, we need to clip the teeth, yung sharp teeth. And then, uh, another reason is that uh, lacerations to the piglets when they fight for a teeth. So, you, you also need to prevent this since uh, yung uh, teeth ng piglets, they are sharp. Pwedeng mag ng injury pag uh, nag-aaway sila. So, by clipping yung, pig, yung teeth ng piglet, uh, pwedeng uh, ma-prevent itong mga to. So, in clipping kasi, uh, you could use yung talagang pair of teeth cutter na tinatawag. Pero, pwede rin yung uh, ordinary na nail cutter. As long as it is sanitized, eh, as long as it is clean, so pwedeng gamitin. And as long as it is sharp, pwedeng gamitin yung uh, ordinary nail cutter. So, when we cut or yung pag-clip dun sa sharp teeth ng animal, it should be, make sure that it is horizontal, hindi yung pa-slant. Kasi pag pa-slant, wala rin silbi, sharp pa rin. Pa, o, kahit clinic mo yung teeth, pag pa-slant, uh, yung kalalabasan is sharp pa rin yung teeth. So, pa, so dapat uh, pa-horizontal, para flat yung teeth ng uh, animal. And then, clean and disinfect the clippers after working with each piglet. So, after mo na-clip yung isang piglet, you need to clean and disinfect it bago ka mag-clip ulit. Then, after that, after, pag na-clip na yung mga teeth, uh, you could uh, put yung mga piglets na, piglets na uh, dun sa teeth or other ng saw for suckling. So, be sure that the piglets suckle colostrum. So, when we say colostrum, it is the first milk of the saw produced after farrowing. So, yung colostrum kasi, it is a very important uh, substance. Or, uh, important ito because it is high in protein, um, vitamins, and minerals. So, kailangan ito ng uh, growing and developing na piglets. As well as, it is also uh, it also supplies antibodies to the piglet. So, kailangan na kailangan, importante talaga yung colostrum. Uh, make sure na after birth, after you clip the teeth, kailangan nagsususo na or kailangan nag, nagpapasuso na yung saw. Then, you need to assist small and weak pigs. So, yun yung kailangan na gawin. If may nakita kang small and weak pigs, uh, one thing that you need to do is to assist them in suckling. Kasi ang tendency niya, yung mga weak at saka small pigs, sila yung huli or hindi na sila nakakakuha uh, ng milk doon sa saw. So you need to assist them. And then, uh, importante rin kasi na mag-stimulate yung suck, suckling na tinatawag. Para may stimulate yung saw to produce or to secrete more uh, milk. So, uh, with that, um, you could employ yung ear notch na tinatawag para ma-identify yung piglets for record-keeping purposes. So, here we have here, uh, parang the universal, universal na, na, parang code for ear notching. So, for the right ear, uh, you have the leader number and then yung left, left ear yung pig number. So, in the right ear, you have here sa part na to, uh, yung corresponding number is 1. For this part, the corresponding number is th uh, 3. And then for this part, dito sa tip ng ear, yung corresponding number is 81. And then for this part, the corresponding number is 9. And then on this part, 27. And for the left ear, ganon, 1, 3, and 9. So, uh, bale, um, except for the number 81 na part, pwede na mag-ear notch ka dito which corresponds to number 1 and then uh, pag pwede ka rin mag-ear notch dito sa katabi niya. So, yung uh, number na yun uh, will be number 1 kasi yun yung katabi. So, yung ear notch na bago will be number 1. So, same with this. Pag nag-ear notch ka dito, yung 
uh, corresponding number for that is number 3. And then same with this, pag nag ear notch ka dito, yung corresponding number is number 9 since yun yung katabi. And then pag nag ear notch ka dito, yung corresponding number is 27 kasi yun yung katabi. So yun yung principle. Pwedeng magkatabi na ear notch basta pwede magkatabi yung ear notch and then you could identify them as uh, the same number kasi magkatabi lang sila so number 1 nag ear notch ka dito, number 1 ulit yun so here is an example so based on this, so you need to memorize, you need to take uh, uh, parang you should know itong uh, coding for the ear notching so so, bale, yung technician, nag-ear notch siya. So, nag-ear notch siya dito, and then dito. Since, mag, uh, since dito, we can see on the illustration or in the code that it is number 1. So, number 1 to. And then, may katabi rin siyang ear notch. So, pag magkatabi sila, then number 1 ulit to. And then, may ear notch rin siya dun sa tip. So, that's number 81. And then, may ear notch siya dito. At tignan natin dun sa, ilus, uh, sa coding, that is number 9. So, uh, gagawin mo lang is uh, isa-summarize mo lang or pag plaplasin lang. So, 1, may katabi siya. So, 1, one ulit yan. So, 1 plus 1 plus 81 and then plus 9, that is equal to 92. So, we can see that yung uh, sound number niya uh, or yung liter number niya is 92. So, ganun yung uh, pag-identify. And then, another example. So, we have here uh, another example. So, nag-ear notch siya dito. Tinignan natin dun sa diagram. Number 1 yan. And then, nag-ear notch siya dito. Tinag tinignan natin sa diagram. It's number 3. Then, sa katabi niya. May katabi siyang ear notch ulit. Since number 3 ito, then yung katabi niya, automatic number 3 rin. So, you have 1, 3, 3, tapos merong ear notch dito. So, tignan natin, number 27, so 27. So, 1 plus 3 plus 3 plus 27, that is equal to 34. So, yung right, uh, yung liter number niya is number 34. So, with that, same principle rin dito sa left ear niya or sa pig uh, number niya. So, ganun. So, ganun lang. So, uh, what you need to do is to memorize this, itong uh, illustration na to, itong coding na to. So, kasi most probably ito yung ginagamit internationally. Ito yung parang established na um, coding for ear notching. So, after ear notch, which is... Um, um, which is a form of identification, uh, you could go to the broodings uh, na tinatawag. So, you could place the piglets in warm brooder box. So, same with the principle on mga broilers. Um, yung brooder box, this is to prevent or to provide heat to the animal, especially when uh, the weather is cold. So, on like months of December, January, February. So, kailangan na mabrood yung mga animal. So, uh, I think this is fairly common dun sa mga temperate countries, dun sa mga temperate regions kung saan may snow. So, they really need to provide brooders in order for the piglets to keep warm. And then, for in the Philippines, I think uh, pwede itong i-apply dun sa mga colder uh, regions like uh, dun sa La Trinidad, dun sa Baguio. So, pwede to. Pero dito sa baba, I think hindi na, na nila ine-employ most of the time. Then, bakit nga ba tayo nag -brood? So, the baby pig's ability to regulate their own body temperature increases slowly from birth to 7 days. So, uh, kasi pag bagong panganak pa lang yung piglet, uh, hindi pa niya masyadong nare-regulate or hindi pa nare-regulate masyado ng body ng piglet yung body temperature. So, kailangan ng outside uh, outside heat source in order to keep the baby piglets warm especially during yung mga uh, cold weather then after that it will slowly increase or it, yung regulation ng uh, body temperature ng pig it will slowly increase 
uh, it will slowly adapt as the animal grow or older. So, basically, from day 1 up to day 7 lang yung pag-provide ng um, brooding for piglets. Then, uh, adjust the size of the litters to the number of functional teats. So, uh, this, parang this is uh, applied to yung mga sows that can produce large number or large uh, litter size dun sa mga land race or large white which can uh, produce mga nasa 15 to 20 na litter size which can produce 15 to 20 na piglets then you can adjust the size of the litter to the number of functional teats so always make sure na all of the teats of the sow are functional na pwedeng pagsakla uh, pwedeng pagkuhanan ng milk ng mga piglets. If hindi na talaga kaya or he, if yung number of functional teats is lower than the number of liter, uh, number of piglets, you can divide the pigs into uh, two batches during the feeding time. So, uh, like for example, you have 20 piglets. Uh, tapos yung number of functional teats lang nasa 15 lang. So, yung gagawin mo, you, you divide the pigs into two batches. So, di, you divide it by two. Yung first batch, 10. Sila yung maunang mag, uh, kumuha ng milk. And then, yung second batch, sila yung susunod. So, yun. In order to address yung issue or address yung problem of um, not having enough functional teats para sa lahat ng later size. Then, Another one, another management practice that you need, uh, that you can do is you transfer yung excess pig to a foster sow. So when we say foster sow, these are sows that uh, produces a smaller litter. So ito yung mga sow na mga nasa 5 to 6, 5 to 8 lang na litter size yung na-produce, na piglets yung na-produce, mga smaller lang. So um, basically, Fostering can be done, can only be done if you have multiple sows that uh, are giving birth at the same time. So, this is done by large farms. So, pag may mga sows na sabay-sabay yung pag, uh, pagpapanganak, then uh, you could identify potential foster sow dun sa mga, dun sa mga sow na maliliit yung litter size. So, dun ka, uh, ka mag-identify ng foster sow. And then, yung mga sow naman na masyadong malaki naman yung liter size, kukuha ka ngayon ng uh, mga piglets. So, it could be 3 to 5 piglets yung kukunin mo. Then, ilalagay mo doon sa foster sow. So, yun yung gagawin mo. Pero, make sure that fostering, yung pagpapaampun doon sa mga piglets, should be done within 48 hours after birth. So, make sure that... Uh, you can identify yung mga masyadong uh, malaki yung litter size and then you can identify yung mga uh, foster sound na pwedeng uh, mag-ampon mag dun sa mga extra na piglets um, 48 hours after birth. So, yun. Then, in the past, mercy killing of non-viable piglet was done. So, uh, noon, when we say uh, mercy killing kasi uh, of non-viable piglets, yun yung mga pagpatay dun sa mga piglets that are too weak, yung masyadong mahina na, too small, yung mga maliliit, and then yung may, may mga abnormalities. So, yun yung ginagawa. Bakit? Kasi if it is too weak, if it's too small, if it has abnormalities, this can affect the production capacity of that animal. So, noon, pwedeng mong ikalogi yun. Kasi pag uh, hindi mo siya pinatay early on uh, mag uh, mag uh, i-input ka or maggagasto ka ng feeds nila ng mga management nila mag -e effort ka eh hindi naman pala productive yung mga yun so logi ka pero presently with the rising production of cost so kasi medyo Mahal na yung feeds, mahal na yung mga vitamins, mahal na yung mga sa labor. An extra effort is worthwhile in trying to save these pigs. So, especially those that are small and those that are too weak. Um, uh, ngayon, in uh, 
ine-effortan na nila na alagaan to take care of it uh, para uh, para kung maging malusog man sila then extra income na yun so yun yung ginagawa uh, ngayon at noon so noon mercy killing talaga pinapatay pero ngayon uh, they take care of it yung mga uh, small at saka yung mga weak na pigs then keep the piglets and farrowing crate uh, clean and dry at all times so uh, basic na health management basic na ginagawa dapat um, clean at saka dry yung um, cages and crates of the pigs so clean para walang bacteria walang viruses and then dry para walang pag uh, babahayan or proliferation na magaganap sa mga bacteria kasi gustong gusto nila, nila yung mga wet na environment so dapat clean and dry then when sows pump during hot weather apply wet cloth so basically ang um, inaano lang nito is that uh, always make sure that the sow and piglets are comfortable so kailangan na comfortable sila kasi uh, once na na-stress yung piglet, once na na-stress yung sow, ang, ang tendency nito, they are more susceptible to diseases. So, when they are susceptible to diseases, kaya pwedeng magpa-lower ng productivity nila or pwede rin nilang ikamatay. So, kailangan na they are comfortable na walang masyadong stress na nagaganap. Then, after that, uh, one management practices that you really need to employ is the injection or giving of iron. So, since yung sow milk is deficient in iron, inject 2 cc of iron preparation to 2 to 3 day old pignet. So, after 2 to 3 days after giving birth, um, dapat inject muna ng uh, iron yung piglet, especially yung mga puti, yung mga landeries or large white. Kasi yung milk ng sow, although nagbibigay siya ng mga vitamins, mga minerals, mga kailangan nutrients, mga antibodies, it is deficient or masyadong mababa yung binibigay na iron uh, to, to this, to the piglet. So, kailangan talaga that you need to inject iron. So, yung recommended, it is 2 cc iron. So, i-inject mo 2 to 3 days old. So, um, for the native pig, kasi uh, most probably hindi na nila ina-employ to. So, bakit? Bakit hindi na uh, ini-inject ng iron? Mostly yung mga native piglets. Kasi most of our native pigs, yung tirahan, uh, nasa lupa compared doon sa mga hybrids wherein nasa semento sila, yung tirahan ng mga native pigs most probably is nasa lupa or yung mga native pigs kasi natin, they are well adapted to it. So, kaya, kaya nilang mamuhay even yung mga piglets doon sa um, soil, doon sa uh, ground. Then, lagyan mo lang ng bubong, lagyan mo lang ng silong, then okay na. So, bagit nga ba? So, native pigs they could able to utilize the ground they could uh, they could utilize the soil for their iron so dun sa soil mismo sila kumukuha ng iron nila so yun yung uh, ginagawa nila so as you can observe parang yun yung uh, mostly na ginagawa nila parang sumising hot nila sila dun sa um, sa ground sa soil so uh, they could be they could utilize yung iron that is available on the soil when compared dun sa mga hybrids natin na mostly nasa uh, semento sila so wala silang makukuhang soil from the ground and at the same time hindi well adapted yung mga hybrid natin na manirahan dun sa ground at or sa soil na flooring so yun yung dahilan kung bakit mas uh, kung bakit um, hindi na sila masya or hindi na sila nag-i-inject ng iron dun sa mga native piglets. 
So that's one of the advantage of native pigs. Pero for the uh, itong sow, itong mga puti, then you need to apply or inject talaga iron. 2 to 3 days after birth. 2 cc of iron. So, sinasabi dito that it is safer to inject at the neck muscle to prevent residual stains in the ham. So, bakit nga ba? ba bakit it is safer to inject on the neck muscle? In uh, in order to prevent residual stains in the ham. So, yung tendency kasi ng pag inject pinupulot mo yung piglet and then, pag pinulot mo dun sa paa, most probably yung pag i mo is dun sa ham area, dito, dito sa part na to. Para mas mabilis, so magpulot ka lang and then inject mo and then magpulot ka ulit ng uh, isang piglet ulit and then inject mo. So, yun yung ginagawa. Pero mas safer daw na sa neck muscle. So, bakit? Kasi, itong in order to prevent residual stain. Kasi yung iron, it can leave a stain or mancha that is visible if you slaughter yung piglet, lalong-lalo na sa ham part, pag in-inject mo sa ham part tapos hindi proper yung pag-inject mo, yung iron, it can leave a stain or mancha. So, pag, na pag may mancha na yung ham or yung, yung ham meat, itong meat ng uh, piglet, it can lower yung quality and then it can lower yung price. So, mas safe na mag-inject ka dun sa neck muscle. So, another management practices that you could employ is that you start feeding the piglets on the fifth day. So, uh, this is parang in order to support yung young pig nutrition, especially when sows and uh, head big litters. So, pag hindi masyadong nakakapag-provide ng nutrients yung sow, hindi masyadong nakakapag, uh, nakakakuha ng milk yung uh, piglet, you could employ yung feeding na. Pero, uh, make sure na small amount lang. Parang as feed supplement muna para ma-support yung nutrition yung young pig. Especially if uh, masyadong malaki yung liter size. So, yun yung ginagawa. And then, yung mga piglets kasi, they are susceptible to scar na tinatawag. Scouring na tinatawag or yung parang diarrhea. Which is caused by yung uh, E. coli na bacteria. So basically, itong scouring na tinatawag or scar, uh, it is one of the most common ailments of piglets. So talagang uh, almost makikita mo talaga na, na the diarrhea sila. So piglets are more susceptible at 1 to 2 for 1 to 2 for 1 to 4 day old, at 3 weeks old and at weaning. So bakit nga ba? So in 1 to 4 days old, basically kapapanganak pa lang yung baboy, uh, they are more uh, susceptible to um, scouring. And then at 3 weeks old, pwede na baka uh, may stress na nangyari dun sa piglet. So, pwede nag-castrate ka, nag-vaccinate ka, which can parang act as a stress or it, it is a form of stress, then uh, it can be susceptible to scouring and at weaning so at weaning kasi it is one of the most stressful part or one of the most stressful um, day for the pig so pag na stress na it is more susceptible to attack of bacteria mas bumaba yung mga immune uh, system niya ganun so it can uh, lead to scouring or yung diarrhea so Yung scouring, it is characterized by yung yellowish stool dito. So, parang nag yellow na parang diarrhea. So, in order to uh, prevent this, you can provide a dry, warm, draft-free environment para ma-reduce yung scouring. So, dry para dry and clean. So, para hindi mag-proliferate yung E. coli. Warm para mas comfortable yung uh, baboy. And then, draft free environment na tinatawag it is um, it is free from yung mga stress so para hindi masyadong susceptible uh, yung piglet from the attack of E. coli that can cause scouring then another important uh, management practices that you need to do is you can castrate the pigs that are intended for meat. So, yung 
parang principle kasi nito uh, in castration in order to uh, uh, parang re, uh, in castration yun you remove the testicle since yung testicle kasi dito nag nagpro-produce yung bore or yung male piglet ng testosterone kasi yung testosterone it can parang uh, parang may distinct smell daw kan may bore taint na tinatawag doon sa meat pag hindi na castrate yung animal so uh, the countries yung mga countries na nag-employ ng castration uh, dito sa mga most probably dito sa Asia mga Southeast Asian mga ganun so um, for mga western hindi na nila masyadong minamind yung bore taint na tinatawag so baka may pagkakaiba lang tayo doon sa uh, pangamoy mga ganun kasi sa uh, western country hindi na masyadong uh, practice yung castration so but basically you need to castrate the pig that are intended for meat sa meat lang ah pag yung piglet mo it is intended for breeding purposes dapat hindi na i-castrate ah so bakit nga ba or bakit nga ba natin i-castrate after 5 days so after 5 days kasi um at this stage yung piglets it can be easily handled kasi maliit pa lamang and then operation is easy since yun maliit na it can be easily handled and the healing is of the wound is faster so pag mas bata ka pa kasi mas marami kang pang mga antibodies mga ganun mas marami ka pang uh, mas uh, faster pa yung healing ng wound due to castration so um for the parang steps on castration. So I suggest that uh, since parang online na tayo and then hindi na hindi na natin parang mala, mukhang malabo na na ma-demonstrate yung castration na part. I suggest that you look on to YouTube, you, you look on Google on videos on how to properly castrate a piglet. So basically yung step, you hold the piglet by both hind legs which is uh, with its head down. So uh, mas parang madali if may kasama ka kung saan siya yung mag-hold so kailangan na pabaliktad yung baboy, so head down dapat so parang ganito and then using the thumb, push up on both testicles, so yun pupush mo yung testicle so uh, may mga piglets kasi na medyo mahirap na i-push or mahirap kunin na you feel yung testicle so kailangan talaga na um, you feel it here dito sa part na to, sa pelvic part niya um, pag may parang nakita ka ay na, na ramdaman ka na parang testicle, then you push it up para ma-reveal or para makita mo talaga and then after that, after mo na push yung testicle parang ganito, you pinch it para mas distinct yung yung testicle and then make an incision through the skin of the scrotum over each testicle in the direction of the tail so yung incision it hindi masyadong malaki hindi masyadong maliit so kailangan tamang size lang para makalabas yung testicle para lumabas yung testicle so yung pag pag make or pag cut ng incision uh, in the direction of the tail na tinatawag, basically, dapat vertical yung incision mo. So, pag ganun. So, pag horizontal kasi, uh, there, there is a tendency na pag tumae yung piglet, pupunta yung mga, yung tae niya dito sa wound. Makakatch kasi horizontal. So, makakatch nung, nung sa testicle, pupuntas dun sa testicle, and then it may lead to infection. So kailangan na vertical para mas reduce yung um uh, occur uh, mas reduce yung um uh, infection and then yung be sure that the incision are made low on the scrotal sac so dito sa part na to hindi masyadong mataas dito lang sa part na to uh, to allow for fluid drainage para mag-flow easily yung mga blood yung mga fluid dito sa scrotum or dito sa testicle mas low dapat para uh, mag-flow easily. So, yun yung mga dapat natandaan. And then, 
after you make an incision, you pop the testicle. So, ipipinch mo siya. And then, you pull yung um, testicle slightly. So, dapat hindi masyado yung biglaan. Kasi may tendency, if biglaan, uh, mapuputol yung cord. Yung parang uh, kasama na, na cord ng uh, testicle. So, uh, pull each testicle out while pressing your thumb against the piglet's pelvis in order to assist yung uh, cord para hindi maputol dun sa, sa loob ng uh, sa loob ng piglet. And then, if necessary, the testicle may be cut free of the cord using a scraping motion. So, when we say scraping motion, parang yung naghiwa ka ng uh, karne. Ganun. Parang scraping motion. Hindi yung parang pag uh, pagtatad-tad, hindi, hindi ganun yung pagkat ng cord. Dapat scraping. And then, cut away any cord or connective tissue protruding from the incision and spray the wound with antiseptic. So, pag may mga extra na mga connective tissues na nakikita ka, then you can cut it. Then, after that, you spray the wound with antiseptic. So, most probably, Mga combinex, mga ganun. So, yun. After that, okay na yung um, tapos na yung castration. So, with that, I suggest na talagang uh, you um, you go into mga YouTubes, you go into yung sa Google uh, in, on how to properly castrate. And then, if you, you have given the chance sa mga sa mga if you have, uh, if you have chances, Pwede kayong mag-practice ng castration if may mga baboy kayo dyan. Mga native, pwede. So, yun. Just practice it and then uh, just follow yung mga steps. And then, um, one thing that you need to consider is you do not win or immunize and castrate the piglets at the same time. So, bakit nga ba? Kasi yung winning, immunize, yung pag-immunize or yung pagturok ng mga vitamins, mga ganun, and then pag castrate, all of these are a form of stress to the piglets. So kung sabay-sabay it mong ginawa ito, then ang, da, uh, ang taas na ng stress level ng piglet. So pag mataas yung stress level din, um, mas susceptible na siya sa mga diseases and then maaari, maaari rin na ikamatay niya. So kailangan na hindi sabay-sabay itong mga management practices na to. So you can allow 5 to 7 day interval between any two of the practices. So, if you cast, uh, if you castrate today, um, you could uh, practice um, um, weaning 5 to 7 days after you castrate. So, yun lang. So, uh, basta yung laging tatandaan is that uh, hindi dapat sabay-sabay. Yung pag we win pag-immunize, and then pag castrate And then, win the piglets at around 28 days. 28 to 35 days, pwede. So, newly win piglets are susceptible to post-winning scores na tinatawag. Since, uh, laging tatandaan na yung winning, yung process of winning, it is a form of stress. So, bakit nga ba form of stress yung winning? Kasi yung winning... Um, basically, it will become a new environment for the uh, piglets. Pag winin mo sila, iiwalay mo yung mga piglets dun sa nanay, which can uh, make yung mga piglets stress. So, pwedeng may stress yung mga piglets kasi hiniwalay mo sa nanay, and then, pag hiniwalay mo, pwedeng maging parang new environment sa kanila. Lalong-lalo na if you uh, win it, then yung then yung ililipat mo is yung mga piglets. So, talagang stressful ma. Wala na ang nanay and then yung environment pa. Then, uh, they are susceptible to stress. So, uh, it is recommended when winning that you, uh, that the one that you will parang ili ililipat mo is yung saw. Hindi yung um, piglet. Yung saw yung ilalagay mo dun sa mga breeding cage or yung saw yung ilalagay mo sa new house hindi yung uh, piglets para um, familiar pa rin yung mga piglets kahit na wala na yung nanay uh, 
familiar pa rin yung environment uh, doon sa mga piglets, kaya less is the response. So, yun yung recommended. Sa winning, ililipat mo yung nanay, hindi yung mga piglet. And then, with that, you provide clean drinking water at all times doon sa mga piglet. And then, after that, you can control yung, uh, you could employ feeding na. Yung parang talagang feeding. So, control the feed pay lang for 48 to 72 hours and then you can, you could increase it gradually. So, on the average, the piglet can consume around 400 grams or more of feeds after weaning. So, uh, that's your basis on how many um, or how many amounts of feed you can give your uh, piglet. And then, uh, other farms, other uh, yung mga commercial um uh, pig production, wet feeding yung ginagawa nila, which can be considered after 1 to, two, one to 5 days after weaning. So, nag, uh, nagpra-practice sila ng wet feeding. And then, uh, you could practice ad libitum as the animal grows older. So, yun, ad libitum na yung pinapakain pa. Pero, make sure na um, the feed that you are providing can provide the pigs with the appropriate nutrients yung it can provide yung recommended nutrient for mga growing pigs so yun and then group the pigs according to size since uh, this is to prevent yung bullying na tinatawag so most probably if you do not uh, group the pigs according to size yung mga malalaking pigs yung mga malalaking pigs i, they could bully yung mga maliliit they uh, pwede nilang uh, awayin, pwede nilang kag, uh, kagatin, pwede nilang um, hindi pakainin. So, they will prevent it from feeding. So, inaaway nila. So, mas maganda na you group them in according to size in order for uh, prevent bullying and then para mas uniform yung pag-grow nila in terms of size. So, yan. So, with that, that ends my video presentation on... Uh, the management practices on piglets after farrowing and then um, management practices of piglets uh, just before the weaning. So with that, uh, I hope you can go over this. You can go, you can listen to it and then please review it as ito yung lalabas sa long exam ninyo. Uh, next week, uh, coverage niya hanggang dito sa care of piglets. So with that, thank you for listening and have a good day.